Welcome back to uh, Let's Hang Out. Do you mind if I paint? This is show number five. I am Dan. I'll be hanging out with you. Let me show you what I've got done real quick, and we're going to get rolling on a happy little painting. First, let me uh, shed the glasses so I can see. And then let me point out to you what we've got going on already. This is a 18 by 24 inch canvas. Um, we'll see how it turns out. I got this on a pretty good sale at uh, Michael's. I've already got a uh, thin, even coat of liquid white on there, so our colors, canvas is all slick, ready to go. In case I forget to put the uh, colors on my palette in the comments section, titanium white, phthalo green, phthalo blue, uh, Prussian blue, mm, what do we do next? Mountain mix, midnight black. Van Dyke Brown, Dark Sienna, Alizarin Crimson, some Sap Green, and Bright Red there. Hey, Jesse, one of our puppy dogs come and join us. Oh, they're both here. Hey, sweetie. And then uh, Cad Yellow, uh, Yellow Ochre, and Indian Yellow to round things out. So, haven't decided exactly what we're going to do here on show number five, but we're going to start with a uh, bright blue sky and kind of just see where things go from there. So, let's just tap in some color. I'm going to jump right into some, uh, oops, let's start a timer. I'm going to do my best to stick to 30 minutes today, and uh, we'll just kind of see how that goes. So, uh, timer's running, glasses are off so I can see, and we're just tapping some color into the brush here. And we're just going to have a go and see what happens. I know we're going to have pretty blue sky and some clouds, probably some water down here. Kind of a bright, well, it's a hot summer day, actually, here in central Florida. So maybe we'll do more of a, not a snow-covered mountain. <laughs> we'll just see what happens. Hope it's a beautiful day where you are. And you're having a great start to the week. Today's a Monday that we're doing the show on. So I know when you'll be watching it. But a lot of firsts or a lot of new things happening in our world this week. Andrew is off to Kiwanis camp for the week. Brandon's getting all finished up with things local and about to head up to Norfolk State for the summer session to be, and he'll be able to start doing some workouts with the team and then start football practice on uh, whatever the NCAA schedule is. I don't have it memorized yet, but I think they can actually start football practice with coaches and live on the field and all. Mm, early part of August, maybe very end of July. Not really 100% there, but nonetheless. A beautiful day here, a lot of exciting things. Weeks off to a great start. And we're going to do an awesome, fun little painting here. So let's see, how are we doing? Are we in focus there on the camera? Boy, that looks way bluer on here than it does on screen. So it could be the bright lights I've got here in the studio. We'll see what happens. And we'll darken this cor these corners up here in just a minute. We're going to add some more blue down here for the water. Maybe we'll see, put some phthalo green in for the water here in just a second. But let's just get some water colors pulled in. Try and go straight across on these. If you're painting along with me, you're going to do some of this yourself. And uh, Leave yourself a little bit of space there in the middle. Be a nice shine, shimmer. Really help your reflections later as you kind of start blending some things together. Now I'm pushing pretty hard on the outside and letting the pressure come up as I get towards the middle. So I don't go all the way across there. Just come back to soften some of those lines out a little bit. And then just go ahead and blend this. I'm pretty happy with the color we've got that. Like I said, I'm going to add some phthalo green to that in a minute, so I won't blend it too much. So I'm going to grab a little darker blue. This will be some Prussian blue, just so I can darken up these corners up here a little bit. And that'll just help guide the eyes towards the middle of the painting, sort of like it's framed a little bit. I was thinking a little darker kiss just sort of adds a little more interest to the sky as well. So. Good fun, good fun. I got to paint uh, this past Friday. Brandon and I were down at a football camp in South Florida. He's working with his coach, Tony. Love Tony, great guy. He's helped him so much develop his kicking. 
And so I'm in the parking lot of PGA National Football Complex down there in Palm Beach Gardens in Painting. And uh, man, some of the staff stopped by. Oops, let's see, we've lost focus there. Come back to us now. Come on, camera. There it goes. Um, some, of the, some of the cats who work there at uh, keeping the facilities just spectacular down there. Stopped by and just thought it was so cool. He had watched Bob Ross on PBS as a kid like I did and just loved it. Anyway, people just love Bob Ross. Who doesn't? Um, but some of the players had stopped by and uh, talked about how much or how cool they thought it was that I uh, had done the the painting while they were kicking in just that short time. Now, camera, why aren't you cooperating today? Let's just see if we get get it moving in a little bit. Now, have you ever had one of those Mondays where everything just feels kind of blurry? Yeah, I can relate to that too. But no longer. Let me just think. Well, we'll just have to see how it goes. We're not going to stop because this one's craziness. So let's just add a touch of that green. I love this little phthalo green kind of. We see it a lot and water here in Florida, so let's pull some of this in. Yeah, I like it when that happens. There we go. So I got a little bit of green there. I'm just kind of go back and forth. Being a dirty brush, it's okay. It's going to leave some of that face in the middle. You can just blend this to however soft you want. It'll help, like I said, the shadows. We'll probably have some water down here in some of it. Maybe we'll add a little more of that green. Who knows? Why not? That green's a good color. Don't you like that? So we'll just put some of that through here. Kind of like that. Well, and then, you know, Saturday, I got to go hang out with my buddy EJ. And I painted... Right alongside him, he was working on one of those incredible, he's painting on, um, is it a Mountain Dew one he was doing? But does these characters, God, I just, yeah, what a remarkable artist. I'll have to put his link in there so you can see what he did while I was painting one of my old out of the woods kind of landscapes. But man, we had a great time just hanging out. Had some good tunes on and good times. So let's blend the sky a little bit. Get some clouds in there and then decide what we're going to do here. May sound like I'm really giving the canvas a whack. I'm barely skeezing by it. Just want to get rid of the brush strokes. Make them no obvious color differentiation than going from light to dark on the sky. And we'll go the opposite way in the water. Hope that makes sense. I'm not much of a teacher yet. But come September, I'll have some more certification classes with Nick. Can't wait. The new Smyrna workshop. All right. I'm digging what we got going there. Oh, that is the fun part. It's not out of the brush. Do all the rest of this painting just so you can beat, beat the devil out of the brush. <laughs> That's just good fun. All right. Let's do this. Um... I'm going to do clouds. I'm just going to do some quick ones. I'm just going to take some white. Let's put that over here. Just a whisper of red in there. Just to pink that up a little bit. Give us some color in the sky. On these clouds. Whew, touch of that red goes a long way. We've got a little crazy on that. Let's do a little bit white. And you can watch by watching me, learn by watching me suffer. It is way easier to add more dark. So start with less, like I just did not do there. So now it takes a lot more light to kind of calm that down. So we're going to kind of chop it off halfway. And there we go. Now we've got something we're going to work with. Hang on, like that. Okay. So that So I'm just going to use a round brush to do this. This is a half... Uh, Half size round brush. I just couldn't get all the dark paint from painting on Saturday out of the full size round brush. So rather than hold up the show, we're just going to do this. So now just decide where you want a cloud and start tapping it in. Kind of think like a cloud. Happy little shapes. I'll come back and blend this here in just a few minutes. 
and we're just looking for shape. Pick up a little blue on the end of the brush. Slide that off on a paper towel and pick up some more of our light color. That's one reason I like putting a little red in there with the uh, white because I am finding that I typically do pick up quite a bit of paint as I come through doing here, which probably means one of several mistakes I'm making. Too much liquid white on there to start, too much blue, too, you know, too, whatever. There could be several things, but um, it'll just turn it into a kind of a purple color if that's what winds up happening. And uh, I'm going to let you, I love purple. Beautiful color to paint with. In fact, that one I did Friday down by the uh, football camp that was going on was only purple, basically different shades of uh, purple that we did there. So hmm, I'm just adding it in. I think this may be a little thicker down here at the bottom. I can kind of see it a little bit here in this corner. Oh, yeah, that would turn out nice there too. And just let your clouds be free. Yeah, such a free thing. Let's keep going with that. Now that's what we got going on here. One thing I hope to learn before I punch out of this rock is how did Bob Ross paint all those clouds without picking up all, all of the color underneath? That guy did. Man, he could just whoop by there and do a whole world of clouds and just barely. I wonder how I don't think I ever saw enough to wipe the brush. I don't know. I probably only watched 370 of the episode, so maybe it's on those few I haven't gotten to yet. All right, let's give these a stir, kind of see what we got. Maybe we'll add in some little uh, kind of floater liner kind of clouds. I like doing those too. So now with just the corner of the brush, don't want to mess up the top edge of that, because that's what we'd be able to see the best, and I'm not trying to destroy it, just kind of mix it up a little bit. Just stir it in a little bit. Tiny little circles here, tiny little circles. And you just think like a cloud. What's cloud to do in your world? You think you've never seen a brush stroke in a cloud outside? Walk outside real quick, pause the video, or if I'm on your phone, take me with you. Go look. I bet you see some brush strokes in, in the clouds out there. So guess what? If you need a few brush strokes showing in your clouds, I think you'll be all right. So now let's just do a, just a whisper. Just pull these streamers up. Don't worry about the little liners we're going to get. It's going to come right back across those. Super gentle. Super gentle and just kind of blend them out. All right. Don't give us any. You want these to drift off into the back? You can just keep doing that and they will just Fade off into the back of your paint. Isn't that cool? I like that. Because now we're going to have a little, those kind of clumpier parts you can kind of see up there will stay and uh, kind of give it some, a little bit of oomph there at the end. I just, I really like that. Let me see. Maybe this is a little bit more of a, I don't know, fuzzball or stack one. Let's just see what happens. One thing we don't do is go by any pattern, no tracing, no paint by numbers. We just sort of start with a thought in our head and our heart and just let it fall out. You know, I know some artists who do some incredible prep work with freehand drawings and then continue on with markers or paint. Man, I love watching them do that because that is just not how my brain works. So I can't see it like that. This is the way I can see it. I'm not telling you there's a right or wrong way, but I am not going from a reference painting. This is just, just whatever's going to happen is going to happen here. So, all right. I like those clouds. Let's leave that there. So let me wipe some of that off because we'll use that half brown again to uh, 
do some super bright colors on some trees. I kind of have a feeling we're going to do that later. So, also a very exciting day in the studio. Anytime we put it in a trash bag in the, uh, in the big kitchen size trash can that we use, <laughs> I get so excited. But uh, um, putting a new trash bag down in my trash can is so much fun. And this camera is just going crazy today. Well, we'll see what happens. That's just what it's going to do. So I'm going to pick up some color. Not too much. Not too much. And we're just going to put in some kind of stringy clouds. Just touch gently and kind of pull them in. And I'm going to pull on a little more, little more color just so these will show up in front of these poofier kind of big clouds we did already. And we're just going to We'll come back and blend those, so if they're not showing up too good, don't worry. I'll let these purple up a little bit, too, as we get over here. And this just kind of helps set those other clouds back. Add a little layer, a little more depth to our pan there, so you can always take the help of adding a little depth like that. That's just good stuff. It doesn't really matter what brush we do this with. We just want a little something to blend those in a little bit. So that's just the same way we were painting them. Just kiss them. Just kiss them. Again, I can't, I'm not sure how well that really sounds like I'm giving the canvas a whack. I am not. A few of the hairs of the bristle and just a whisper of hair on it. So just whoosh, right across everything there. I just, I'm just trying to be careful not to go too far so it smooshes it all into one cloud, which I don't want to do. But I'm hoping like the churned up part of this middle in that cloud is showing, or at least coming through on the finished video here, because that's, that's, that's the exciting part for me. I really like that. Okay. What are we going to do today? What are we going to do? What if we start with some distant trees back there and then we kind of bring some things forward? How's that sound? That sounds like a good time to me. So. Let's get ourselves a little bit of a dark color mixed up. How about we go with um, blue, blue, midnight, black. We're just going to start with that, and we're going to lighten this up so we can do a couple of couple of things. Now, midnight black to me looks purple when you add white to it because midnight black just like middle of the night. It's not pitch black, not ivory black. There's definitely some blue out there in the dark. I just love that. So let's just tap some into our uh, round brush, round brush, Half, one inch oval, one inch oval. We're just gonna put in some, I'm just gonna put a little darker than that. It's kind of way off in the distance. Let's just start a little off center here. I'm just going to start touching and see what happens. And if we don't like what's happening, we'll change the angle of the brush and get things going so we do like what's happening. There we go. We're going to chop some of these off. So this will look like uh, we've got some nice water thing. Darken that just another smidge. Just a little darker. A little darker as it gets up towards us, and we'll uh, let it keep a few more of those details. There we go. Now we're going to pull That's what I was talking about. There we go. That's what I wanted. There we go. Now let's just take the fan brush. Give that the ever so gentle little lift so these guys look like they're standing tall way back here in the, in the background and as they come to us as well. So cool. Let's put a little dark down in the what's going to be the reflection underneath them and we'll come back and pull these straight down in just a second. And you can be pretty haphazard with this, not just crazy clumsy and all, because we're going to put some land under this. And we still want it to look nice when we get here, so we're just going to 
blend it in like that. And I had the same thing. I had a two inch brush. I got my butt kicked trying to clean it, and it still has some dark in it from uh, painting on Saturday. So that's all right. We're going to use that for reflection. So we're just going to come in here, pull straight down. <laughs> that was not straight down. That one's better. There we go. And just wherever you want it to, to be the land, just decide to come in and pull it down. So we're going to add a little more color there for us to pull down because these reflections will be a little taller as they get closer to us most of the time. So just keep the look going that way. So I didn't realize how off to the side those look, but let's just kind of take these to the side now. Every time it works, every time it makes that look like a reflection. I just love it. Let's get a little darker. I saw something I didn't like and we're, we're going to straighten up some of these trees. Add a little dimension to those just since they're here and otherwise kind of looking like they've been blown over by the wind. Which, hey, that happens from time to time. That's not what we wanted to have happen right there in our painting. So that should be okay there. That should be okay. We're just going to add a little more of that as we go. Kind of move back here. Not random. I am thinking like a forest. Thinking like the trees. So let's put in a little land back there. And we'll just keep on going. I'm just going to use straight brown for the land back there. Small knife. Little roll of paint. See if it'll focus on it. Little roll of paint out there on the edge. And we're just going to pull a little sideways. And this land will get bigger and bigger, a little taller as it gets up closer to us. Run out of paint? No problem. Pick up a little more. And just kind of add whatever shape. Certainly does not need to be uniform. The ground seldom is. So now let's do a little bit of highlight color on that. How about we take a little bit of dark sienna. We can use a little bit of our cloud mix. Just because that will have a little red in it. Leave it nice and marbly. Pick up just a little roll. Just ever so nice. Almost like ice cream snow on the mountain. You can change the shape. You can add it to whatever you really want to. Just a whisper. Just a whisper. Put some highlight on there. Makes it look more like dirt and land. And maybe, maybe even a little part that comes straight down. Who knows? We might have something like that over there. Cool. Now let's take our hand brush again. We'll get our cloud cover off of there because we're just going to use some light. Some white. Just going to tap a little white in there and I'm just going to go back here and pull straight up so it looks like we've got some uh, tree stumps or you can see a little bit of light zinging through there going straight up because we might, as it gets closer, start seeing some tree trunk action. And if it gets a little too light for you, that's okay. Just touch it gently again, and those will blend right down. Whoops, see, I grabbed some of the dark color there. I like how that looks. That was a happy accident. You see that happen? I don't mean to do that, but I actually like that better. So we'll just kind of carry that on through. And now we're going to put some stuff on, on the slope, and we'll be all right. So let's kind of, I always wind up holding like four or five brushes in that. That doesn't work out so well a lot of times. So uh, what did I say we were going to do? We we're going to put some color, some grassy things. Hmm. Which color shall we use? Let's put a little bit of uh, uh, some of the yellows. Let's put some of the yellow color down there. Just kind of see what we think. Chuck yellow over. I like that just because it's even darker. And let's just kind of kiss the kiss our. Uh, dirt area there, and that kind of sits in front of these trees. Just kind of makes it look like a little something's happening there. I kind of like what we got going there. Probably can't see that a whole lot on camera, but uh, I can certainly see it standing here. 
But one thing I have fought against is doing things extremely uniformly. Getting better at it, but I have not completely mastered it yet. So moving on, getting better, getting better, getting better. Practice, practice, practice. Learn something, do it again. So let's put some uh, liquid white here on the palette. Pull it out real flat, and I stirred up that liquid white really good before I did the uh, uh, the coat on the whole thing. And we're just going to cut in a little waterline here. So keep this pretty straight. And then kind of just saw back and forth like I'm trying to cut through the canvas. Because you cannot hurt the canvas. And if you go sideways like that, come back and fix it. No big deal. Back over here with some white. And this just helps it define dark from light, light from dark. Well, I made the holes on that today, didn't I? There we go. And it kind of just helps add another kiss of depth back there. So, all right, this is going to be pretty far off in the distance, so I'm not too worried about this. I think I could do a little ripple of water if we want. One or two of these might show through, but again, I am not worried about that because we'll put something here in front of that and probably a big tree over here on this side. That's what it feels like today. So. All right, let's move over to the other side, and maybe we'll come a little forward and cut something else in, maybe a little bit bigger. So let's go back to our oval brush, take some more of our black color, move it into the light, just so we're going to have a darker value. Things as they get closer to us should get darker in value. Let me just mix up that whole pile. We won't need that light again, very likely. So let's really kind of kick it a bit. This next one a little more bold, but still not all the way to the pure dark color. We'll save that for up close, and we're going to make a ha right in our face when we get there. Let's see. Holy Moses. We're down to four minutes left on my timer. I am not going to do well on 30 minutes today, but we'll get things moving. So what should we do? Let's just kind of, well, we'll just kind of do the same thing and kind of push in. Push in some trees. Now the only thing I'm guarding against here is not sliding the brush. Pushing straight up. You can pull straight down if you want to to get some different shapes. Turn it this way and get a different shape tree. Maybe one goes up like that. We're going to put some highlights on these, so don't worry about. And we'll put some. Uh, what was I going to say? Put some uh, tree trunks in these as well. So this is just helping us get some things in there to bring this guy forward and give us a place to do some cool stuff. And now, as you can probably guess, this is going to be a reflection here in the water of what we've got up above. So we're just going to kind of pull this in this way. And then we'll have something to uh, bend into the reflection there here in just a few minutes. All right, but we're going to keep going with some other bushy things. Seen these trees been done both ways, from the top down and from the bottom up. Now some of this looks like Spanish moss to me, and I just love that look. Like on our oak trees here in Central Florida, I really like that. So we're going to take up this little darker color to add some of that into some of these areas like that. All right, let's grab some paint thinner. Put that in our Sandbag brown there, add a couple of tree trunks to this, just going to make this super, super thin, thin like ink, should just flow right off the brush, and, just, and most of this is going to be covered up, so don't worry too much about where all these kind of things are going. So 
really started to look at oak trees and such. Man, they have things going every which way. And it's just so cool. Their branches, they really do. They just kind of go everywhere. And there's just boo coodle of them. And they go every direction. They twist and go over each other. It's just amazing. I don't know if you can see those are not on camera, but we'll do a couple more. Just under you. Some will be out there, some will be behind you. There you go. No wrong way, boy. Under a minute on our 30 minute plow. And you can tell I have some serious work to do if I am really going to do these in 30 minutes. It is a skill to learn how to paint and talk, one I have not mastered yet, but that's okay. I am having a ball and loving it. All right, well, I like what we got going there. So let's get this reflection addressed, get some highlight on those things. This is going to be good. Reflection. All right, well, there's my 30 minute timer. I'm not going to let it buzz and make that crazy sound on this. So let's just grab our. Uh, reflection there and pull that down oh, isn't that just magical how that works like that just work love that reflection every time now you can do that again as subdued or or leave it as, as big and bold out there as you want. So now let's take a one inch brush and how about what color should we do? Let's see how some of the yellows and greens look on that. So I'm going to pick up some sap green. Makes such a pretty green when you go into cad yellow with that. So let's do some of that. We'll do some different variations there. Let's start kind of light. Oh, there we go. That's a green I like. Now I pulled it in one direction just so I've got a good curve shape. And I'm just going to touch. Just going to touch and see what happens with our color over our purple there. Because the dark color in the back is really just to help the lighter color stand out and give some dimension and shape back there. So let's reload. And don't kill all that dark now. That's a pretty natural thing to kind of do as well. God knows I've done plenty of that. Whoa. Just left too much, too much color, not enough dark. I like that. That's kind of a subdued, subdued kind of green there. Let's see what we get. Picks up a little green and yellow. Let's try and brighten that just a smidge. I'm going to steal some of this liquid white we used before. That just seems really thick, like it's not going to want to stick. That's an interesting color. Let's use that for some of our ground stones. And while we've got that, let's just go ahead and add in the water. And we'll reflect that too. How about that? Pick up some more of that green. And think shape and form. Do not kill all of your dark. Darker green still. Oh, I don't know about you, but I like that green right there. Yes, sir. That's fun looking. It's a bold color on that one. Yeah, I kind of like that. Oh, you know where we're going next, do you? We're going to get some alizarin crimson, maybe even some bright red on another brush. And just kind of go crazy. And you do not have to go in order of the trees. You can kind of go whichever one you think would be in front or in back or beside the next one. You decide. It's your world on your canvas. You decide. Let some of them run over each other a little bit. 
go outside and look at some trees that don't all just line up and stand and not touch them. They all work together. All right, let's go to some bright, bright, bright. Oh, I have to take a round brush. I like the shape of the round brush. Let's see. I'm going to tap right into uh, some alizarin crimson and watch this. This you're going to like, I can tell already. Oh, that kind of looks like cloud grass, so you may have to get a little better than this. So let's put some of that down into our water there because we'll let that. Like right down in there. I like adding Indian yellow to my alizarin crimson, and we'll make a pretty little color right here in front of this tree. Maybe right down here a little bit. Put that down into the water, just like so. What's next? What's next? Ooh, bright red. All right, I'm with you. I'm with you. See, when the paint kind of starts wearing off the brush, you just get lighter values and different colors. I like exactly what just happened there. So we used all the same colors, but covered quite a bit of territory. And now we'll just reflect that down in the water like so. Kind of follow the same path, just so we get related colors. I'm not worried at all about them matching related. I just don't want it to be super, super distracting to anybody's eye. So, excellent. Let's do this. And let's see, just going to barely, 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 barely touch. Don't want to destroy it. Just want to reflect it. Oh, there it is, there it is. Watch this. Here it comes. Are you ready? Oh, you get kind of happy. Look at that. Look at that. That looks like a lake I have jumped in before. <laughs> Love it when it happens. Love it when it happens. All right, let's get our land color again. Uh, a little closer to us, looks a little darker on our land. So I'm going to go straight midnight black, plus we'll put a nice highlight on there. So a little roll of paint. And I'm just going to just pull in a little bit of land back here. This one's getting closer to us as it comes up this way, believe it or not. Just the way it makes sense for my little bean. So that's what we're going to have happen. A little more color. A little bolder. Oh, there it is. Like that. Yeah, it just went like that. And we'll put a little highlight on that in just a second. I just want to knock down those ridges so they don't mess us up here in just a minute. But okay. Just gives us a little contour to our shoreline there. What color do you feel like doing there? What color should we highlight that? The same one we did before? Okay. All right. I'm good with that. Let's just do a little bit more um, dark sienna. Oh, yeah. A little pink in there. I like that. So let's just do that. And the only thing that's touching the canvas there is the paint. The knife's not touching at all. Like I said before, it's just like just like ice putting snow on the mountain. You don't want to ice a cake. You want to put just some highlight. And see, I'm not crazy about what I got there, but you know what? We're going to work with it. We're going to put some cool, cool things on there. How about, since it's closer, brighter colors, let's go for some of this greener, brighter yellow mix we got going on and see about putting some cool down here, like that, got some grasses growing right down to the water. Yeah, that's what we're talking about there. Some more here on the point. Just kind of gives a little bit of believability to that. It might belong somewhere. Let's put some. We're using love the water, so if some of them get in the water, don't you worry. There. Give ourselves a little water line. We'll move right on and just about 
finish this baby up. So level lines, solid back and forth. Cut in there. Don't be shy. You ain't gonna hurt this canvas. You hurt this canvas, you have really done something. And it's better than kicking the dog. So take it out on the canvas, not the dog. Just use the heel of the knife if you want. You can kind of reshape your land if you need to. No, it's just so cool because then you got a smaller area in there. Use the short edge of the knife and press it back in there. Get it back in there. Look at that. Look at that little just kind of code that helped me make there. And I'd love to tell you I planned that from early this morning when I was having coffee at five o'clock. But Magical things just happen when you get in motion and let them happen. All right. I'm digging that. So let's bring in a big old tree. Maybe a little something right here and call this one done. So we're at 41 minutes total on the recording. Thanks for hanging with me if you're still here. If you're not, you wouldn't know anyway. And that's all right. So what do we say we're going to do? A big old tree. How about a great big, great big, great big so let's take a bunch of brown. Brown's a good for trees. It's totally fine. We've got some other color in our fan brush. That'll give it some highlights and let's just go for it. Look how big a tree you're feeling. You feeling big? You feeling bold? I am. So let's go for it. Love it. Make him a little stronger down here at the base. Maybe he's got an arm that Kind of has a little yomper, 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 yomper. And kind of grew in like that. I like that. What do you think? You ever seen a tree that had an arm that just kind of went crazy off to the side? I sure have. I've fallen out of a tree that kind of looked like this. Probably knocked some sense into me, but that's good. That's good. All right, let's get some uh, branches on this guy. Great brown again, super thin, super thin, super thin. Again, these, a lot of these we're going to cover up, but we're just going to put in this stuff. And you put in whatever kind of branches make sense to you. The only thing I'd suggest that you remember, branches don't just come off of one side of the tree. And you will not be able to see them all once you decide, if you decide, to put some leaves on it. So, don't worry about it if it pops off. Wherever you want it to go, the biggest thing I think this does is just help add depth and push everything behind it back a little bit. So I hope that kind of makes sense and you see that as well. So you might have one that goes like that, but you're never going to see all that, so don't worry. And every now and then you may just have one that's kind of just out there by himself for selling. Okay, cool. Let's put in some dark on that tree. And then we'll put in some more light. Let's just go lots darker. So we're going to hit the blue, the black. Let's pick up a dollop of brown in there. The blue's a little too blue, so we're going to kind of cover that up. I don't really like that. So we're just going to put in some dark. Again, to me, this is on the back side of the tree, so I'm not really worried about as much here as this is just going to be to hold the color and highlights we're going to put on this in just a second. So I'm really just kind of thinking about background shape and a good spot to put in some highlights. So I hope that makes sense. But it does make sense to me, so it should make sense to you. This has that mossy look to it on camera because I think it just looks so cool. I think it looks cool over there. We'll see when we get, get a little more done or over here. And we'll do something here in just a minute. So, all right, good. I'm digging that. Let's go with a fresh brush though because I really want this one to be brighter. So, I'm going to go into some liquid white. This is just to help it thin down. 
and let's put on some sap green. So this will be a brighter green since I'm using the white, liquid white, straight into the sap green, but I'm still going to get a lot of green in there, so it's pretty dark. And then we're just going to come in and highlight. Come in and highlight. Give me some. Again, now I'm really thinking shape. This is on our front side of the tree, the part we see, the part we are closest to. Let's do not get all twisted up about that because I don't want to get frustrated or disappointed and not like it. And I've loved everyone so far. Learned something, change, would have changed something about every painting I've done so far. So I'm having so much fun and learning every time. And that to me is really what it's about. Great way to spend part of a Monday. Like I told you, lots going on in our world right now. Great break from work and stuff. I'm going to have to take a break from work stuff because I'm going to have to do some. Mm, I am digging what we got going on here. A lot of my trees to me felt like they were just flat before. And Getting some practice doing this darker color around the back. Boy, did that really help. Well, you think there should be leaves? There should be leaves. It's that simple. A little of that other color we made. There's the yellows in it, kind of like that. That to me feels like it might be down here on this. Branch is kind of a loner down here. I don't mean to say lonely. All right, let's do just one more across the top there. Looks like I missed a spot that I probably would want something on. So let's just kind of darken that one up. Like that. I love the way these look in front of these clouds. That's why I'm adding a few extra. All right, so let's bring in some land, and we're just about to get done. All right, so we're going to go closer to an hour on this one, it looks like. That's okay. That's all right. Let's go back to our dark colors. Blue, take a little more brown, brown and black, and we're just going to put in some, uh, put in some land stuff down here so we've got room to put in some other. Let's just bring him all the way. Well, we're going across. We may go all the way across there in just a minute. So I'm just putting in a lot of dark so we got something to put light on. So just want to cover up most of this blue down here. And we may cut in a little path or something. That's a good idea, actually. So we won't go quite as ferociously. Putting in dark here. Now this, I am giving the canvas a pretty good wallet. You can probably hear that. If that's what you're thinking, you are correct this time. Plus also these shapes will really take the highlight well. Little variances in the colors I'm putting on there. That'll really help us out here in a few minutes. So let's put in a path. Let's use uh, some brown. That's got some other stuff in it as well, but that's okay. We're just going to You have to make the sounds. I hope I said that before. It definitely helps if you make the sounds. We're just going to give ourselves a little place to walk. Highlight on this in just a second. I'm just scraping off some excess. Excellent. Put on a little bit of highlight color that we used. It's a little brighter than I want, so I'm just going to kiss over it slightly there. There we go. And now we'll do some things to set that baby down in there. That would be some really bright, bright 
bushes and green things and got some stuff like that. How's that feel? Is that going to be all right with you guys? I hope so. Oh, we're going to do some more of that. The crimson color giveaway for the first day, I guess. All right, so let's see. We're going to get this guy going first. Right down to the edge of the path, so it kind of looks like that. I may have to cut a little more there. I was a little more aggressive than I meant to be. Change up the color just a little here. And on these bushes, it's important too to leave a little, leave some dark. That will help us have some depth. So as I come down closer to the path. Don't let me cover all that up. There we go. Let's switch to our red reds. Oh, yeah, round bush. And we'll tone this one over a little bit so it's on some of those greener ones. So we'll pop rate of that. I hope you can see that color. I like that color. Just a smooth kiss of white. What we got going there? We're going to that up just a smidge. A little darker. And these guys sitting here, they kind of feel like they're in the shade to me, so that just sort of made sense. And we'll just pull them down onto our path a little bit there. Everybody okay with that? All right, let's leave that there. What do we do with our big golden eye? There it is. A little more uh, path down in there. All right, and let's drop in a little more dirt, more uh, land stuff. And you'll see, you should be able to tell pretty quickly how that just helps that uh, path set down in that picture. And we'll put some highlights on it, so it's really going to help it too. Just want to get that bottom covered with some dark, so it'll take our highlights away. And what do you think? Let's alternate our colors a little bit. We'll get the reds going first, and then I'll just kind of. Color. There we go. Get a little bit of this color. Step back, take a look. Yeah, that's okay. All right, so we need something it feels like right here. Let's just make a crazy big tree. Who doesn't love a crazy big tree? I love a crazy big tree. So you thought that tree was big. Well, let's make a big one. Ready? So that one leans that way. Let's have this guy lean this way and let it go. He goes right off the page. I told you. Big tree, big tree, big tree. Just love how just the brush itself adds so much dimension to that and just texture and 
bark kind of looking things. And I'm just going to have this is where our dirt is. How about that? So let's add a little bit of uh, branch action to this guy. We're going to need some branches. We'll take some branches. Rebuild on these branches, oftentimes the better they become. So let's do some color on those. And we're going to call this baby done. So we're going to dark first. Pick up all the darks you got. And that's what we're going to do in there. Just need dark to show the light. So we're really going to start. Light on that. And we're about ready to call this in here. Done. Let's go back to our greens, get a little more wood for the point. Green, some bright yellows, all kinds of pretty colors. One direction, one direction with the brush. And let's grab our little key. Thin paint sticks to thick paint. Just a great lesson to remember doing these guys. Girls, uh, are you painting? Are you treating boys? Girls? I seem to be both. I get along quite well, actually. Well, we add a little brighter color to that. Let's see what happens when we add these two together. Maybe this one's still got some loose blue in. There's some getting ready to fall off. Who am I to tell? Well, let's get some bright stuff down here on the ground, and we're going to find this one is done, 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 done. How about, I probably should have put there. Let's do this bright red with some kind of good stuff. Put some crimson on now. Just tappy, tappy, tappy. Bright red to finish it off there. Maybe we'll put a little climb up. A little bit of something climbing up the tree right there. You might want to touch that if you're close to it. It seems like you could make things itch. Let's just cut in a couple of sticks of these blues. A few over here. Let's sign it. This baby's done. Perhaps not. I'm done. <laughs> so I hope you've stuck with me for an hour. Holy cow. I hope you've enjoyed this one. This was a lot of fun to do. And 
show five going in the books. Do something cool today. Be good to people. I'll see you.